Okay, can we give one more round of applause? That was amazing. And and maybe more amazing is that I, we didn't actually talk about the song selection other that she was going to play one of the songs that she wrote. And while we're in the holiday spirit, I don't think that anything could have been a more perfect song to help kick off this event because one of the jobs of Women Tech Council is a community. It is a place that you can fall. It is a place that tries to lift you up. It is a place where you meet people you would never otherwise meet with the intent of trying to help each other. And at this, not just this time of season, but also in the economic climate that we're faced with, with so many of our tech companies, I'm not sure if there's a better time where we need community and we need other people and we need to watch out for our neighbor and we need to lift them. Um, and I won't look at you guys because you two will also make me cry up here from, um, from that. Um, but that would be one of my wishes. And I think Bree's song echoed that is that one of the things that you find by participating in the Women Tech Council is a group of women and men who are trying to lift you up, who are trying to help you, who are trying to build a great community and who are trying to make a difference in the world because that's what happens when our collective power comes together. And I hope you feel that in the spirit of today and in the organization um, and in just the things that we're providing. Bree Song couldn't have provided, I think, a more beautiful sediment to the event that we're doing today. So thank you for taking the time to come and to be part of the organization and to be willing to lean in to help the community. Over the last couple of years, one of the main objectives of the organization has been to focus on what we call one more. This idea that we can do one more thing that is, thing that is really small in our everyday life that helps lift someone else, makes their journey lighter, provides them a connection. And at this time, we're gonna need that more than ever in our community as we navigate the uncertain climate of the next 12 months. Um, and so all of us that are in positions where we can build networks for people, we can invite someone to a new meeting, we can provide an introduction, we can elevate those around us, we should take the opportunity to do that and just really make a commitment to doing that for the community and for the other people around us. It's the thing that builds great communities. I think it's the one thing that makes Utah such a unique ecosystem. This ecosystem doesn't exist everywhere. You cannot go and jump into an ecosystem with so many people who are really trying to cheer you on and want to help you. So my challenge for you as you think about what you're going to do in 23 is to also be the one more for other people, to also be the person who lifts people, who finds the gaps that they might have, who puts them in positions they can't get to themselves because you're willing to open those doors and you're willing to be that person in our community. And when we do that, we will ultimately succeed and build a better tomorrow for all the people who come after us. And that's what we want you to feel as you participate in, this org in our organization and with each other. I'm really grateful that all of you came today, and I'm really grateful to be in this fabulous new facility. How many of you, is this your first time in the new Zions building? Okay, Jennifer, we brought all your new friends to the building. You know, Zions built this technology center. I think it's the largest in the state. Is it 100,000 square feet? Oh, 400, way off. Okay, 400,000 square feet. Jennifer led the entire development, so if you want to know anything, you should just talk to Jennifer. She's fabulous. And what's so cool is this is a tech center, and they open this space to the community so that we have an opportunity to bring groups together and to be able to use this space. And we're incredibly grateful that they're that they're partnering with us, that we get to use this space, and also really grateful that Adobe's a partner in this event. I think Adobe's been our partner for like a decade in the holiday social, which is, makes it so awesome. And we always try to do creative things that bring the light of the holidays, entertainment, and community together so that we can see each other. It's really fun to be back in person. We have not done an in-person event for a number of years. It's really cool to see everyone and to have an opportunity to come together. So with that, I get the privilege of inviting Jennifer to come up and do a welcome from Zions. Thanks, Sid. You all look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it is so wonderful to have all of our friends here, friends we know and friends we have not yet met. Over a year and a half ago, Sid set out that one more challenge. I forgot to ask her when to stop because the one more uh, challenge was I will take on one more person to mentor and that quickly grew into five or six because it was oh I can do one more after that um, so I'm still not sure when we stop doing one more uh, but it's a fabulous challenge for us all to take on this this campus 400,000 square feet supports the technology needs for eight of our banks across the Western United States. We would be honored 
to have, we are honored to have this kind of gathering in this facility. This is a high powered room. There's so much creative and innovative energy in this space right now. It might be the most, the, this, the, the strongest gathering of creativity and innovation happening right now this month. So cheers to all of you for everything that you accomplish and everything that you will accomplish. Now, my one more uh, taking on the challenge uh, for the coming year is to do one more thing to help help an individual, a woman uh, find that next great opportunity. As our climate is changing, our work climate is changing, if there is anything I can do to introduce any of you to one more person or a colleague to one more person, please reach out. Thank you for being here. We are thrilled to have you. And now we're going to turn the time over to Zion's Bank CEO uh, to welcome you as well. Good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Anderson, President and CEO of Zion's Bank. And it's my honor to welcome you to this evening's event, Investing in Women, Building Opportunity, Capital and Community. We are grateful for the opportunity to co-host our final community speaker series of 2022 with our Enterprise Technology Office and in conjunction with Women Tech Council's Holiday Social. And I want to start by thanking Jennifer Smith for her leadership in bringing the vision of Zions Bank Corporation's technology campus to life. We now have this beautiful space for our employees and community to enjoy because of her commitment to a shared vision. Creating a space for community gatherings like this one has been part of that shared vision since inception. It is our hope that each one of you feel welcome here and that over time you will develop a genuine sense of belonging here in our tech campus and in our community. Jennifer is known as the community builder, most notably through her efforts of championing women across Science Bank Corporation's footprint and in the communities we serve. She's played an integral role in building our company by investing in women pursuing careers in technology, finance, banking, and many other fields across our industry. Among her many accomplishments and acknowledgements, is being named among American Banker Magazine's list of 25 most powerful women in banking in the nation. She's a visionary leader, making an impact on our industry, our company, and our community. I also want to thank Sid Tetro, co-founder and president of Women Tech Council, for her leadership in transforming and strengthening Utah's tech sector by making it a more welcoming and inclusive space for women. Among other things, she has been honored as CEO of the year, woman of the year, contributor of the year, top 10 coolest entrepreneurs of the year, and most recently received the South Valley Chambers Titan Award in recognition of her significant contributions to our community. Investing in women, and women-owned businesses, as Jennifer and Sid have done, plays a critical role in strengthening our technology and banking industries and in growing our economy. Tonight's program will feature four women leaders in venture capital who will share their personal stories centered on the theme of building, opportunity, capital, community, respectively. I want to acknowledge and thank our One Zion team, our Enterprise Technology Office, and the leadership of Women Tech Council for organizing and producing today's event. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today. It takes a community to invest in women, support women, and champion women as they pursue and advance in their careers. It is our hope that you will take what you will learn in tonight's program and continue the conversation with your teams, your friends, and your families. 
building a culture of inclusion begins with us. It begins with me and it begins with you. So with no further ado, I'd like to turn the time over to Sid Tetro, co-founder and president of Women Tech Council, who will introduce our featured community speakers. Sid. Okay, two things. Clearly, I did not watch the video ahead of time, or I might have changed it. Um, but also, you can see why Scott is such a great leader in the community. He was the recipient of this year's Impact Award at the Women Tech Awards. I and mean, you can see why um, he has dedicated so much of his work to doing things that build inclusive environments and programs. And he just tries them. Sometimes they keep going and sometimes he changes them. But that's what makes him such a great leader is he's just constantly watching that. And you know, the opportunity to partner with Jennifer, who's such a fabulous leader and, one of, and a recipient of the Women Tech Awards. Um, and she's been a judge the last few years. She's just a phenomenal leader. It's so cool to have so many great people who are lifting the community that we get to help build with. Um, and Scott's just one of those great leaders. I also am excited to invite to the stage Allison from Adobe, who's also going to share a few words as one of our co-partners in this event. Just step forward Thank on you. stage so they can hear. Okay, awesome. Thanks, you guys. I'm Allison Lerchmeyer. I'm with Adobe. Um, I did not plan on speaking, so it's going to be short and sweet. I am just so appreciative to Women Tech Council for the partnership that we've had with them for over 10 years, probably at this point in time. To be able to advance and amplify women's voices in tech is just, uh, we just are so aligned on our vision with Adobe and Women Tech Council that we really appreciate the partnership. Um, creating the pipeline with SheTech, it's huge, you guys. I, I really encourage all of you to be involved. We've been involved for many, many years, and it is so rewarding to see these kids come up and get so excited about technology. I go to lunch and I see women's faces in the cafeteria that I hadn't seen before. I was used to being the only woman in the room for, for many, many years. And to see so many of you here celebrating networking with other women, it's just so exciting to me. So I'm just going to leave you with one thing that some of you who have children may not know, or those of you who may be in college, all of you have access to the creative cloud. Your children do. So to get, get access to it through their education, through their elementary school, junior high, high school, and college. Make sure that they understand what creative is all about. Get them excited in technology. This is a really easy way for them to be able to access that. If there's any issues with getting access, just talk to the principals, talk to the leadership. But just know that Adobe does support children. It does support uh, women in tech, and we're excited to be here. So thank you, Zions, for hosting us. We appreciate it, and we look forward to the next one. Thank you. And I know I saw some of my she tech friends in the audience, some of the young women who are gone through the program and or in college now. If you were, will you guys raise your hand? We'll just give you guys a shout out. A whole bunch of our high school girls. What's so cool is they get become part of the community and then they just launch into their careers, which is really awesome. And as Allison said, she tech, I'm just gonna now play, make a plug, is February 28th uh, for Explore Day. Usually 3,000 high school girls show up, it takes a thousand volunteers and mentors. So if you want to be involved, you should absolutely be involved because it's just a great way to activate the next generation um, of young women. So with that, I'm really excited to introduce our program. As Scott mentioned, we kind of try to follow this TED Talk format where we have these hard hitting topics and you kind of get that short, they're all super excited about the time limits, um, hard hitting messages that we get to hear that are tied to our themes for this year that Scott introduced. So I'm really honored to be able to introduce our first speaker, which is Kimmy Pollock. She's going to speak on investing in women. She is the managing partner at Beta Boom, and she has really spent and dedicated her career to how we get more capital into women's hands. She has this really unique perspective, and I'm super grateful that she's here, and I'm excited to welcome her to the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sid. I'm going to reset expectations. This is not going to be like TED Talk at all, <laughs> but I will keep to the time as best as I can, and I'll look for my signals. Um, thank you for having me here, Women Tech Council, Sid, and I'm going to step away from these mics, make sure these aren't going. Uh, no, it's really incredible to be here. I have to say, you know, one of the words that I've heard um, tonight already is inspiration, and from Breeze singing, that have brought many of us to tears. Um, to Sid's words, thank you. <laughs> I'm already feeling inspired. So I, as I was, I'm a confessed investor. I do invest um, in startups. Um, and this story that I'm going to tell is more about not just investing in women, but also investing in ourselves. And so, you know, my fund is called Beta Boom. We invest in software, 
that is building the future for women and people of color. Um, I'm proud to say that for our current fund, we have 100% representation of women on the founding team. And that is an important thing. <laughs> It's an increasingly really important thing because I think we've all heard the stats of how much capital goes to women and it is abysmal. I'm not doing this, I promise. 14% go to blended teams, only 2% to all female teams. So that leaves really 86% that is going to all male teams. And this is a battle that we know that we're facing. I want to start with a story. I'm going to tell you, tell you the story of Amanda once after this brief intermission. All right, is that good? Thank you. OK, um, Amanda Doamaral ran a company called Fabulous. She's still running this company out of Wisconsin. The important thing about Amanda was she was a teacher. She was actually a Teach for America teacher in a low income high school. And she brought the pass rate for AP studies in her school from about 50% to over 75%. She burnt out, as many people do. We know the stories of teachers and what they have to go through, especially in these times. And she left the classroom. And her students came to her and said, Miss D, we need you. Where are you? And we need you to keep teaching us. And so she, with no tech experience and no business starting a business, decided to start a business to help her students. She cobbled together a platform and started an online social learning platform. She grew it from just 420 students to now reaching about three quarters of all AP students. So she serves over 7 million students a year. But the important thing about her is she's not only serving these students, her pass rate on this platform now is 92% the national average is 50 to 60%. This is the power of tech, and this is the power of the things that we can do, and it's the power of having a different perspective. She, like many women doing a startup, was told no countless times. And she was told no because she didn't fit the pattern that everybody looks for. White male from Stanford, coming out of Google, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She was none of those things, but what she did have was extreme domain expertise. She knew her students and she knew what she needed, they needed, and she built it for them. But so many people like Amanda, so many women give up because we don't fit the pattern. And we're told no so many times. And so part of the story is we have to understand we're going to get told no. And we also have to say, no way I'm going to do this anyway. In parallel, I'm in venture. There's very few black women that are running funds. I believe I'm the first one in Utah. Uh, and I had no business to start this fund as well. I did have operational experience. I did not come from finance. I didn't do mergers and acquisitions. I didn't work for the big consulting companies. But I did know that we were missing a huge opportunity. Why does 50% of capital go to, to Bay Area? It makes no sense. Why is only 14% going to women? It makes no sense. And in that, there's an opportunity. And in that, I need to look in the mirror and say, why not me? And that's what I want everybody in this room to think about today and every day. And as we think about one more, is why not me? And why not invest in ourselves and take that leap? I think this room is a powerful room. And I know that many of us are fighting many struggles every day. We've talked about the macroeconomic conditions, but the fact is we've been fighting this fight forever. And so, yes, let's do one more. Yes, let's invest in ourselves. And let's also not be the last. Let's make sure that for everything that we do, we're paving the pathway for women to follow us. So I thank you for having me here today, and I beg you all to invest in yourselves and to take that leap and say, why not me? Oh, yeah, that was a fantastic message. Perfect way to kick us off. Thank you for both sharing. That's an amazing story. We should share that story and amplify it more and all the work you're doing. Thank you for leading the way on that. I'm super excited to invite our next speaker up. Her name is AJ Brow. She is the CEO of Wander, and she was one of the Women Tech um, Award recipients this year. So please welcome her to the stage.
Hi everyone, I'm AJ. Um, my thoughts today, I have six minutes. My thoughts today are focused on those of you in this room that have an idea, something that you just can't stop thinking about, a problem that you've just been thinking about solving, um, and maybe just need a little bit of a, a nudge. Um, my hope today is that at least one of you leave today and decide to start building that idea. Just put something into action and start building. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of a nudge. Someone giving you permission to try something that could fail. Uh, it's scary. Um, one of these experiences for me when I got nudged was when I was 14 years old and I was at Lake Powell with my family sitting on our old ski boat uh, trying to figure out what we were going to do that day. And I pulled out Google Maps and a paper map to try and figure out where all the cool places were that we could go explore and got kind of frustrated trying to use these two cumbersome um, options and expressed this frustration to my mom. I said, Mom, someone has to build an app to make this experience better. Somebody could come up with a better map experience. And my mom looked at me as, you know, her 14 year old daughter and said, why don't you build it? I just looked at her and was like, what? I've never built an app before. Um, well, long story short, two years later, the Lake Powell Map app was on the App Store, um, generating six figures in revenues and being used by thousands of people around the lake. Thank you. So, um, small success, but as a 16 year old, it was pretty exciting to build a software product that was generating revenue and sustaining its own its own development. And I had other destinations around the US reach out to me and say, hey, we want maps built for our visitors. We would love to give this kind of an experience to our visitors. And um, well, anyway, all of this happened because my mom just gave me a little nudge and gave me permission to try something that uh, that could fail. Someone I loved and respected. And um, the second experience like this I wanted to share happened about 10 years later, this time with my dad. Um, I had just become a new mom. I had a six month old little baby and he took me to lunch um, and we were tired. I'd become a software engineer at this point and was working and um, we were talking about this Lake Powell map app experience. And I said, Dad, don't you think we could like build something bigger? Like somebody could take that idea and scale it and and, you know, solve the problem for more destinations. And he said, well, why don't you do it? I was like, oh, I literally am holding my six month old baby, um, still nursing. Um, I was like, well, dad, I'd have to convince people to work for me, right? As a 23 year old mom, I have to convince people to, you know, invest in me. And which Kim explained is, is the difficult thing to do, right? Um, and I'd have to go all in. I'd have to quit my job. Like, this is scary. It's a big platform, lots of code to write, lots of things to do. And he just said, you should go for it. I think you should go all in. Um, and now, three years later, we have, again, six figure revenues in Wander. And we'll, we'll hit a million um, plus next year, seven figures. Um, thank you. Um, 15 employees and uh, happy, happy paying customers and hundreds of thousands of people using our maps around, around the world to plan and, and enjoy these experiences with their families. All because, again, another nudge. Um, so my invitation to you guys tonight is to, if you know someone and love somebody that has an idea and is, is thinking about this, give them a nudge. Um, invite them to give them the permission to try something that could fail. Um, and whoever it is that's going to take their idea and go build something awesome, please come back and tell me. Um, and thank you so much. What I love about hearing everyone's stories is that they just talk, they tell you so much about their grit and what is possible if you believe in yourself. In a path that is unknown, which for many of us happens many times over the course of our career, we don't know where we're going next or where the journey is taking us, but so much of it is based on how we handle that moment and what we decide to do next. I think that's what's inspiring about the stories that we're hearing. I'm really excited to bring now up Rochelle Morris. She is heading up Rev Road Ventures. It's a brand new job. She's been doing an amazing job at that. Um, another woman in venture, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about building community. All right. How y'all doing? No. <laughs> 
I'm from Texas. I had to do it. Uh, so this last May, I got a phone call out of nowhere from Darren Hill, who's the founder and CEO of RevRoad the Accelerator. And he asked me to consider becoming a co-founder of RevRoad Capital. Now, that was crazy for me. I had never considered becoming a venture capitalist before, and uh, I kind of laughed at him, uh, to be honest, and, uh, and thought, no, Darren, I'm not going to become a co-founder of a venture fund that does not even exist yet. Uh, but Darren knew something about me that was really important, and he knew that I'm kind of addicted to building community. And to me, community building is all about generating meaningful connections that ultimately accelerate impact. And so to consider accelerating the acceleration, well, that's essentially what I'm doing now as a managing director at RevRoad Capital. As a fund, we get to do that literally. We raise funds from investors, some who live in Utah, some who don't live in Utah, but want to invest in Utah-based startups. Uh, we get to support and invest in really innovative and creative founders who are here in Utah. And then ultimately the deals that we do create jobs like in our community. We give a founder 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, $10 million. That's immediately jobs for growth in our state. So that's great and all, and that's literally the work we do as a venture capital fund. But what does that mean as far as what my work schedule is? Well, truth be told, and I'm pulling back the curtain, so now you get to see behind it. I literally spend over half my time meeting people, trying to build a relationship with them, and trying to accel accelerate the solutions to problems they're looking to solve. And that's it over and over and over again. Uh, sometimes when I meet someone, it's like friendship at first sight. You know how those go. I had one of those meetings with Kat Kennedy a few months ago. We sat down, we were at Gorman D's and Draper. We asked each other what we want to accomplish over the next 10 years, realized that we have so much in common and we've been collaborating ever since. Just like boom, bam, go off to the races. But I would say most times relationship building is really a slow series of small interactions with other people. And it can, it can feel frustrating at times, like, huh, am I really building a relationship with this person who's working to solve a creative problem? Well, be not dismayed. Because just as the saying goes that so often we overestimate what we can accomplish in six months, and then as humans, we underestimate what we can accomplish in five years, the same thing can be applied to community building and relationship building. And uh, I've been thinking about what stories I want to share. And, and so uh, a story that's like really heartwarming to me over the last few months is uh, there was a, a founder and funders event that Kiln hosted up in Eden a few months ago. And there were a couple hundred people in attendance and there were dozens of women in attendance. And so uh, what happened organically at this lunch was the women kind of started like networking with each other. And organically, we kind of grew into this crew of 15 women having lunch. And by no like intentional design of my own, I happened to be the common thread who knew every single woman who was in this lunch crew via the different networks that I've built over the last four years in Utah. And it was fun because it was like, hey, here's so-and-so. Here's a fun fact about her. You two should get to know each other. I'm doing that over and over again. Well, the Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson happened to be at this event and she happened to pop by because we kind of stood out and she just wanted to meet us. So she sits down, spends a few minutes with us. She has to go on to another event and she goes, but 
can we all like get together again? And we were like, uh, sure, we'll get together with the lieutenant governor. And so I'm pleased to report that after that experience, we've had two quarterly breakfast meetings, you know, where this we've kind of just organically become this private sector tech and venture crew of women who are a sounding board to our lieutenant governor as she thinks through building out programming with initiatives such as Return Utah and other policies that she's working on. And uh, I don't say this to brag about myself, but to just share a story that in four years of living in Utah, somehow I became the woman in the moment to help the Lieutenant Governor create this sounding board. It just happened. Um, and it's really humbling to be able to serve a public servant like that. So anyways, the small interactions that we have can build into relationships which then can build into accelerated impact that create a huge lift for our community. And I'll fill you in on a little secret and how I strive to create meaningful connections with people I meet with as quickly as possible. When I meet someone for the first time, I turn off that part of my brain that wonders or cares what it is that they're thinking about me. I just don't care. And instead, because I'm not wasting brain power wondering what it is that they're thinking about me, then I'm able to focus on creating a connection. And then I get to ask myself, how can I help them? And uh, sometimes that happens immediately and sometimes it happens years later. So anyways, my challenge for all of us tonight, we're here in a perfect setting to meet someone new or to have a second or third interaction with someone who you've met once or twice before. Do your best, turn off that part of the brain wondering what it is that they're thinking about you, just connect, and who knows, maybe four years from now, you'll be the woman who introduces your new friend tonight to the Lieutenant Governor. Thanks everyone. I love that idea that we underestimate what we can do in five years um, and great, great words to live by. And you're just a great example of that um, inspiring words. I'm really excited now to bring our next. All of these women are just doing a fabulous job. Hopefully you walk away with something that just speaks exactly to what you were looking for in this moment. Next up, we get to bring up Anisha McCormick. She was one of the Women Tech Award recipients this year. Um, and interestingly, you don't know this, but when we were thinking about this event, you were one of the first people on our list where we were like, we would love to be able to hear your story and your inspiration. I'm really grateful that you're here. And she's going to talk a little bit about opportunity. Thank you so much, Sid. Um, I'm coming. Apologies. I almost brought my notes up here with me a little bit. Step forward. There we go. Um, I almost brought my notes up here, um, mostly because I'm coming off of a lot of emotions um, with things that are happening in our market and world, but I'm here because I knew of the great women that were here. Um, many of you have heard it said that while some of us wait for the door of opportunity to open, some of us kick it down, right, right? So as I share my story tonight, I want you to think about what doors of opportunity are in front of you and are you ready for them when they show up? At the age of 25, my great grandmother was a woman with five, raising five children in the South during the Great Depression. And at that time, she found herself in a position where she had to go to work and you can only imagine that during that time, finding work was extremely difficult. Now add to that being a woman of color and that new layer of difficulty, finding a job to try to take care of your family. She, her courage and her bravery to want to do anything she could to take care of that family 
led her to kick down a door of opportunity that created that was created by sacrifice. At that time, she had to pass for white in order to obtain employment to take care of her family. She got a small job working in a school cafeteria as a cook. That legacy of strength and sacrifice was passed on to her daughter, which is my grandmother, Willie Mae Price is her name. At the age of 14, she quit, uh, dropped out of high school, ninth grade, taught herself how to sew, and started working at a local uh, dry cleaner to take care of and to support her mom and her family sewing, doing alterations. That talent and skill would propel her to continue to take care of her own family of 13 children um, and raise them only to then find out that her husband had cancer. And so she had to figure out what to do then for her family. And at that time, she decided, hey, I can sew. <laughs> I'm good at this. And not really knowing what she was doing, she started her own business as a black woman in her home. And she served as a seamstress for 50 years, um, taking care of her family. That legacy of sacrifice, strength, and perseverance was passed on to my mother. At the mere age of 18, right out of high school, she got her first job as a secretary in the government. She was the first African-American woman to, to work in the government. And it was a very difficult time for her. She knew, too, the importance of taking care of her family. She knew the sacrifices that she had to make, which meant as a black woman, she had to stand tall and endure racism, ridicule during that time to take care of her family. She retired several years ago after 40 years of service in the government and many, many different positions. That legacy, these three women are foundation, are foundational to who I am as a woman. It is because of their legacy of strength, sacrifice, perseverance, that I have been able to not wait for the door of opportunity to open, but to kick it down. When I look back at all the doors that I've had in my life of opportunity, many of them I had to find and look for. Um, some of them were there and were placed before me because of trials and tribulations that um, were not things that I had control over, but most of them were locked. As we think about what's been going on in our world today, the turbulent economy and what has happened to many of us um, as we've watched companies have to uh, be forced to reduce, re to reduce their workforces. There's not a soul in this room that hasn't been impacted in some way by this. It was exactly four years ago yesterday that I find myself working at a company where I too was reduced. It was a very difficult time. I was the primary income earner in my home. I have a husband that suffers with severe mental illness. We were building our home. I had no savings. Every penny that we'd made went to building this home that we were now about to lose because I had lost my job. We had three children and Christmas was 13 days away. And I thought to myself, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to take care of my family? So I didn't wait. I looked for that door of opportunity. And let me tell you what happened over the next six months. I had 28 job applications, 11 job interviews, a couple of presentations. And at the end of that, found myself at Pluralsight.
it is these doors of opportunity that come before us that we have to think, what are we to do? So you ask yourself, how do we knock down that door? One, know what your sacrifice is. Two, know your strengths and use them. Three, focus on what matters most. And in that one, that can change for each one of us. For me, it was my family, how I was going to take care of them. And fourth, surround yourself with people that have kicked down the door and are willing to help you kick down the door. Quoting Michelle Obama, and I should say paraphrasing, she said, when we've worked hard and done well and we've walked through, and in this case, I'll say when we've kicked the door down, right? When we've kicked that door down, don't slam it shut, don't seal it up. We leave it open. No, we reach back and we bring somebody else through and give them the same opportunity that we've been given. Over the last 36 hours on LinkedIn, I have seen this happen on happen to many of my colleagues. I have watched numerous folks rally around them as we now are faced with new doors of opportunity. So going back to my question, are you prepared for the door of opportunity that awaits you and will you knock it down? My invitation to you is to create that legacy, be that legacy of women that don't wait for the door to open, but they kick it down. Thank you. I'm just going to say there's always a reason right when you feel like you're supposed to do something that you should take the opportunity to make sure that you do it no matter what it is um to just echo and just you know lean in a little bit to what anisha and what what all of the women talked about you learned two things right one is um you have the power to make the difference and it is up to us to take whatever we're faced with and figure out how to navigate through no one escapes hardship no one does it just comes at different times and the, the real thing that we're all here for is how do we help each other in that journey? How do we create successful lives and communities and impact and use our talents and resources in really good ways? That's what we're trying to do. And that's the, those are the stories that you heard from those four amazing women and their journeys. One of the things I love most that we get an opportunity is to use the platform of the Women Tech Council to hear inspiring words from other women in their journeys, because when we hear them, we can find relatability, we can find inspiration, and we can find whatever it is that we're looking for to help us in the next day or moment or month as we go on this journey. Just one quick thought, as I was just hearing those speeches, right before this, we held an advisory board meeting for the Women Tech Council. We were actually talking a little bit about the series of layoffs that are impacting the tech community. There's uncertain times as we go into the next, um, into 23, it's impacting people that we know, as was mentioned. One of the most incredible things that happened in that meeting is there was a call, there was an ask. If you know ways or places that are hiring or companies where people could potentially land, will you share? And many people commented after because there were an entire series of hands that went up that said, my company is hiring. I know this community is hiring. I know there has help to be found here. That's the actual call to action, is how do we help other people who are in need? That's the power of community. It's the power of the people in this room. It's our opportunity to kick down the door and take advantage of those. And I am grateful and honored that I get to associate with all of you and the things that you're doing and just be part of that journey and helping build a great community. So thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you for all of the words that you guys shared. I have two last things that we're gonna wrap up with before Brie like takes us home from the holiday social. I get to invite Sui Lang to come up. She heads up all of the diversity and initiative. I'm just gonna say all of it at Zions Bank and does an amazing job at helping us build community of inclusion, which is really key to Zions Bank. So please come up and join me and say a few words. Wow, aloha. 
Thank you so much for making me feel at home. And thank you, Sid. I just want to acknowledge Sid and Jennifer. Uh, thank you so much for your leadership, your allyship. Uh, I don't necessarily identify as a woman in tech, nor do I identify as a woman in banking, but I want to be because of Jennifer and Sid. They make banking and tech cool. And that is the ultimate goal of any diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative program, uh, all of those things. And so thank you so much for allowing us to crash your party for one. Um, and just a little quick story on how this all came about. Uh, I was literally went to a Rev Road event, uh, ran into Sid and Kristen. I was recruiting for speakers for a community speaker series on guess what? The exact same topic that we're doing tonight, women in venture capital. And they mentioned they were hosting their holiday social here. We're like, let's just partner together. That's what I love about working with women. We are so willing to collaborate, to partner, to support one another in our journeys. And that is what we have heard here tonight. Uh, let's hear it for our speakers. Oh my gosh. Amazing, amazing job, Kimmy. Thank you so much. You are a pioneer, sis. Thank you so much for making Utah your home. You could launch your business anywhere. AJ, you make this look so easy. Where are you? Oh my gosh, amazing. I loved hearing your story uh, and, and just the ease. You are a natural at what you do. Uh, and then Rochelle. Rochelle is my community partner because I go to a lot of community events. And guess what? I see Rochelle at every single one of them, uh, including that Revro Capital one. Thank you so much. I got your name right this time. Uh, and Anisha, you're pulling on my heartstrings. Thank you so much for sharing the numerous social, racial, and cultural barriers that far too many women of color face in any industry. Uh, you, you really touched my heart this evening. I just want to acknowledge our partners that help make tonight possible. Natalie who, here at ZTC, who organizes all the events here. Uh, Kat, who runs catering. Let's hear it for the catering. The food was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and then Kim Bellison. Uh, Jared, who ran all of the audio visual, thank you so much for producing these events. Dylan and Kristen, so thank you so much for your contributions. It was an amazing, amazing uh, event and evening here tonight. I hope you enjoyed all of your experiences. Um, and lastly, as we embark upon 2023, I encourage all of us to think about all that we have learned, experienced, and gained this year. And think about what we can invest in, how can we can invest in ourselves, in others, and in our community in 2023. That is this, what is this work is all about. Uh, and as Scott mentioned, building a culture of inclusion begins with us. It begins with Jennifer, with Sid, with Scott, with all of our speakers here tonight. And it begins with you. So with that, thank you so, so much for being here. We really felt your spirit, your energy, and your support this evening, and we look forward to continuing this conversation. Okay, and to close us out, we are going to get to bring Bree Ray back to the stage. We're so excited. You guys are excited. Come on now. She's going to wrap our event up with two other songs, and then there's food in the back, and there's networking. As you were encouraged, meet a handful of new people before you leave. That is everyone's job. Make sure you meet just a few new people before you go home. And we hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, um, and happy new year, because I probably won't see you until then. And then we'll see you into the next year. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>